in Glickenhaus, uh, who will talk with us about API as a product, uh, who, what, where, when, why, and how. Uh, so, hello, Alan. How are you? I'm good, Betty. How are you? Great to I'm see doing, you. Re doing really well. Hey, you look in really good shape. <laughs> it, that's great because we have you for 25 minutes talking about API as a product with all the questions we can ask about the topic. Yep, absolutely. Sounds great. All right. Should I start sharing and get going? Yes. Are you right. going to the slides with us? Yeah. Okay. And... Can you see that? Yes, full screen, perfect. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, great to join everybody today. I'm thrilled to be part of API Days New York. Um, so, um, so I added a little bit more to the title and most importantly, how do I make money, right? And I think I'm gonna spend most of our time together on that particular piece. Um, given that it's API Days, I expect most of you are API experts already. Um, so I, I did want to cover the who, what, where, when, why, and how. Um, but fairly quickly, and then talk mo mostly about money. Um, so, uh, as Matty said, my name is Alan Glickenhaus. I work for IBM. Uh, I've done API and related things for a long, long time, and have um, visited many businesses around the world, helping them understand uh, what's going on that I'm seeing happening, and, and sharing best practices and insights uh, through workshops, conferences like API Days, and I write a lot, uh, so I've written a whole bunch of things. The list of categories of topics are, are at the bottom of the screen with a number next to that for the number of things that I've written in each one of these areas. And at the end of the deck, uh, which we will give to you, um, there'll be links to every one of these things. So you can get to all the things that I've written about. Um, so today's topic we're going to cover um, uh, is written about already in, in a few of the areas in the business and value and in the strategy and governance and best practices sections. Um, so a very easy agenda uh, is who, what, where, when, why, and how. Uh, however, I'm not gonna do it in that order. Uh, it's gonna be what, who, when, how, where, and why. Uh, so, uh, so we'll um, go in a slightly different sequence and, and get through this. Uh, now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna cover um, some of these a little quickly. So hopefully uh, that won't be a problem. I, like I said, I expect most of you are uh, really API experts and, and could probably give the beginning part of this presentation. So, so let's get into the what. Um, so I'm really talking about API products here, not just APIs. And, and, and an API product is, is an offering that we're making with APIs in it to a, a particular audience, a target market to satisfy what they need. And, and, and I've underlined customer needs. And, and, and so I'm already trying to make a key point here that this is about what the consumer of the APIs wants from you, not what you necessarily have to offer. And, and so we get a challenge frequently in the conversations that I have about businesses who build APIs based on what they have, as opposed to what the customer wants. And, and hopefully, you know, we get some cases where there's a particular API and that's exactly what the customer wants. And, and it's one thing and that, that solves their, their need. And we can put that in a product and make that uh, available. But in other cases, um, there, there may be multiple APIs that are needed to solve what a customer needs. And, and that's okay too, there's nothing wrong with that but we don't wanna make the customer, the consumer, have to find out which of these maybe dozens or hundreds of APIs that you've listed here um, are the ones that I need to solve my problem. And, and, and so what we do is put the batch that they need uh, from their perspective together into an API product and make that available to them. So, so that's, that's the what is an API product. And around that, we put uh, plans, which are a way that we wanna make this available, an acquisition option. And, and that may be uh, based around how many times can you call the API or pricing. It could be a low utilization is free and a higher one is, is uh, costing something. We'll get into the money later. Um, but some, some options potentially on, on how uh, the consumer might acquire this product. And then also we typically establish some kind of security around the product to be sure that we're showing this to the people that we want to see it. Uh, we may have products for our internal developers, we may have products for partners, and we may have products that we make available to, to anybody in the public domain. Um, so we wanna make sure that the right people are seeing this and then that they're accessing it in the ways that, that we want them to access it. So there'll be some kind of security around that. 
Um, the who question, right? So who is responsible for API products? And the answer to that is an API product manager. And this is a topic that we speak about frequently at, at API days and write about as well. Um, and it's a key role that in some businesses, unfortunately, does not exist. And they push this role into the API developer role, which causes all kinds of problems that I'm not going to get into today, but happy to answer questions on that as well, maybe at the end. But let's assume that there is an API product manager, that there is someone responsible for this API product that we want to come out. And they really have two roles, one at the beginning and one later on. Uh, and the first role is that uh, I mentioned that we want to have a target market that is going to use our product. So we have to understand what target market are we going after um, and what do they need from us, right? So we need to explore, you know, their from their perspective, uh, outside in, what are they trying to accomplish and then work with the developer role to build the necessary APIs and then put them together into the product offering that we call uh, an API product, establish the plans and so on. So this is what happens up front um, as we're getting started with products. And, and then once we build the product, uh, we wanna make sure that the audience that we're going after knows about it, right? So we can't just build the product and, and assume that they're going to know that we now have one. So we have to communicate to that audience that this exists and demonstrate why using this is better than the way that they used to do things. And, and so uh, the value of the API product to drive the consumption and then hopefully measure the results and see that things are working well. But if there maybe could be some improvements that we can iterate on this and make some some enhancements over time. So that's the who. Uh, the when and how. Right. So this is uh, this is. Uh, the life cycle of the API product. And, and so products, as we said, have plans and plans uh, may be composed of one or more APIs. And so we in IBM supply a product called API Connect. Uh, we also have a, uh, another product called the Cloud Pack for integration that includes the API management, but also other integration capabilities together in, in a single product. Um, and, and the life cycle of building API products is part of the API life cycle, which helps you uh, create, manage, secure, socialize, and analyze from the APIs to building the products and so on. And at the appropriate stages in the life cycle, uh, the API management solution will help the API product manager build the, the plans and build the, the products that they want to make available. Um, you know, other vendors have other products that do similar things, and uh, you could certainly try to do this without a product, but I think that would be much, much more difficult. And then where? So where uh, does someone get the API product? And the answer is your API portal, which is part of the API management solution. Um, so we publish the API products on the portal, um, and, and that gives the consumer the ability to see what products you're making available. So we're showing them what we we believe and have researched and understand that they want to, to do. Um, and then to make this simple for them to consume, we're going to do as much as we can to, to make that happen. So we're gonna provide code samples, documentation, the ability to try the API, maybe FAQs, blogs, whatever it is that we need to do to make their consumption of the API as simple as possible. Because our goal, uh, which we're gonna get to in the why is, that if you build it, they will come does not work. We need to get them to consume these API products, right? So our goal here, the why is use my API product. Uh, and, and so we were building these APIs because we want somebody to use them. And, and we need to can't assume that all you need to do is make this available, right? So the API products are the way that we package this together, make the consumption easy, uh, and 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 make this a uh, simpler choice for them to do than to go about it in other ways. And and an example I, I was thinking about is you know you could go uh, I'll use a car. You want to buy a car? You can go to a car dealer and buy a car. You could also go and buy the thousands of parts to build a car, right? And 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 so we want people to be able to see cars and buy cars. That's the API product. We don't want them to have to put together thousands of parts to figure out how they can make a car, right? And so the API product is, is, is you know, the way to simplify their consumption of what you're offering to them and, and instead of putting the burden on them 
to look for what things you offer and put it together themselves. And, and if you don't do this, the option might be that they go look elsewhere and, and get the APIs from a, a, an alternative source, which is you know obviously not our goal. So the next question logically coming from this, if you have a child, you've heard this before, when you answer the question why, the next question becomes, but why that, right? So uh, why do we need uh, APIs? And, um, and so, um, this is this is really the age old question of why are people doing APIs, right? What are we trying to get from from APIs? And, and, and so just thinking about what businesses are doing with APIs, that they're allowing their business assets that are inside their their company to be securely and easily consumed and used by developers. These could be, like I said, their internal developers maybe a mobile app developer or somebody, you know, getting access to data that's in their environment. Uh, it could be a partner, it could be a public API, whoever the audience is. But we want to uh, uh, put this in place, the APIs, to allow them to have easy consumption of this through eventually the API product. And what I've spoken about at API days for, you know, it seems like decade now, um, are drivers of why I'm seeing businesses do this. So as I roll around the world in the old days before COVID and visit people, you know, I would I would talk about four business drivers that I would see uh, businesses trying to to use APIs to achieve. And 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 so if you think about what these are, uh, the first one is speed, which is speed to market. So I want to be able to deliver my offerings to market faster. And I can do that if the assets are easier for our developers to uh, consume and use. And that gives me more revenue. I get my offerings to market faster and, and then I'm making money from those offerings quicker. Um, the second one is reach, which is reaching new customers or reaching new markets. And the goal here is, again, to, to, to get more business, right? So I'm selling more potentially through ecosystems is the new, you know, one of the new things that I've, I've spoken a lot about here at ABI Days. Um, but, you know, the idea of maybe through partnerships and getting your, your offerings in front of customers that aren't necessarily thinking about you, but thinking about uh, something else that you can then participate in that ecosystem to provide uh, a solution for. And again, the goal here is get more customers, get more revenue. And then the third one is innovation. And so we want to be able to try new things and see if we can branch out and do new things with our business. And we also want to be sure that if, while we're trying these things, that if it doesn't work, we can fail fast, that we can uh, make things, you know, uh, make an attempt. And if the attempt is not going to work, that we can not have a tremendous amount of cost around that. And again, APIs and microservices are helping with that. And the goal here is to drive revenue and save money on those that, that don't work, right? And then the last one, which is in my writings, I called it domains, but here I used a better word, which is share, which is to share information across the silos that are in most companies. And, and I hear the word silo, I don't know how many times in conversations. And, and so, you know, the ability to move uh, or share data between uh, lines of business or between geographies, um, avoid duplication of work and data. Uh, the goal here is, is to save money. And, and now you know, there may be other business drivers you could think of like actually making money um, or beating the competition or other things like that. And you can kind of um, think about those in the, concept, in the con context of, well, if I wanna make more money, how do I do that? I get to market faster, I reach more customers, I innovate, right? If I want to beat the competition, you know, you, you get the, the message here, right? So so I, to make it simple, I've focused on four business drivers over the last you know several years. And this is monetization. This is the real monetization. This, these things, the speed, reach, innovation, and share is driving by far the majority of API business um, value in, in companies that I speak to. Um, so when people talk to me about API monetization, they always want to talk about a price for an API and charging for the API and so on. And, and that is by far a much smaller um, percentage of the companies that are doing that than those that are achieving significant value by uh, these four areas here. Uh, so I don't want, I'm going to get into the other one in a second, but don't underestimate how important this is to your business because this is the real API monetization. This is where your business is going to achieve tremendous value and tremendous revenue and, and, and cost savings. So having said that, 
let me now talk about what most people think about as monetization, right? So, so uh, this again is a topic that I've spoken about at API Days in the past. There's a link at the bottom of this page to a white paper that I've written. I'll just check time here. Okay, I'm good. Um, that uh, talks about four major categories uh, of monetization. And the one that everybody wants to talk about is the second column here where the developer pays you to use your APIs. And, and, and there are examples of that. IBM does it. Uh, you know, when you pay, you use our cloud, you may pay for access through APIs in, in our cloud. Um, they have many other businesses do, do, uh, do this as well, but it's not the majority. Um, in many cases, APIs are free. Uh, in many cases, the, the indirect model, which really relates to the four things that were on the previous slide, are the ones that most people are, are, are doing. And then there's a category where you might actually pay a developer to represent you to sell your product to someone, and you may pay them to use your APIs, right? So, so all of these are valid uh, monetization models. And in the white paper, I get into the categories in more detail. So here's just a breakdown of the, the high level view. Again, I don't know, edit, didn't edit it up, but maybe about 20 or so um, different models here. Um, and each one of these in the white paper goes into what it is um, and um, how um, and how how you can use it and what might um, uh, what and, and an example of what uh, what one of these uh, companies that's doing this is. So so again, I'm not going to get into that in detail here uh, today, but but you can read the white paper; it's available out there, and um, and get into the different models. Um, again. I, I speak about this all the time with businesses on, on monetization. I'll talk about the four business drivers. I'll talk about the four categories in monetization here. And people will still come back to me and say, okay, but how do I charge for my APIs, right? So, so that's the column that everybody wants to talk about. So, so let's get into a couple of considerations around that and, 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 and what you're thinking may go on there. So when you're thinking about charging for an API, you have to think about the value of that API um, to the consumer, right? Then, you know, it may be valuable to you, but is it valuable to someone who's going to, to use it? And, and are they going to be willing to pay for it? Is it just the cost of doing business to do that? Um, the other thing, and this is a little bit of a complicated discussion around this question, is who is it valuable to? Is it valuable to the developer who's going to use your API or to the end customer for the thing that they're creating with the API. Um, and based on the answer to that, you may come down to different of those monetization models. If, if you think about three parties here, there's you as the API provider, there's the API consumer who's going to develop a mobile application, let's say of some sort, and then the consumer who's using the, the end user, I won't use the word consumer again, the end user who's using that mobile app um, we want to have value to all three parties, but but who is the API value value valuable to? An example might be if this is a, 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 a the mobile app and and the consumer is using this mobile app to buy something. Um, you may uh, be providing validation of their identity or uh, uh, maybe their um, ability to pay. Uh, you know, some kind of a. Um, a, a a thing that is going to validate to the person supplying the mobile app that the person trying to buy this is actually going to be able to pay them. Uh, that's value to the consumer. And you can certainly charge for those kinds of, of APIs. If on the other hand, you're providing value to the end user, um, uh, the product is yours and the consumer is somebody who's representing your product to the end user, um, th then you might not want to be charging them. You might want to be paying them to represent your product to the end user and not, uh, not somebody else's. So you have to think about where the value is in the value chain in, in these three different parties. Um, do you want to own or uh, do you own or want to own the customer relationship? So thinking back again to that end consumer who's buying something and if it's your product, you may want that end user's identity to be passed through to you. And, and that for, therefore, you can contact them again in the future and say, hey, you previously bought this and now we want you, you know, we think you might be interested in this other product. If you charge the API consumer for your API, they don't have to give you who that end user is, right? They own that, that relationship. Um, so you, if you're paying them for it to pass that end user through, then you can own the relationship. So again, this is a consideration when you're charging for the APIs as to, you know, how you want this to play out. Um, 
when you price APIs, there's a reluctance for people to pay. I and mean, sometimes it's hard for them to pay. If you're a developer, you don't necessarily have the, uh, the ability in a company to commit your company to paying for something. And they would have to go through some kind of an approval process and so on. And if there's an alternative that is free, they may go that route, right? So, so charging for the asset could potentially cause people to go elsewhere, right? Which is you know, something to consider. Um, and, and then I mentioned, should you pay them? And then even when you are charging for it, often there's a tiered structure in some way that you know there's a free lower usage uh, level and then maybe different levels of usage or value that you might price on, not just necessarily usage that, that makes this um, you know, a higher levels that they would pay more for. So lots of discussion here. Again, this is full sessions that I've done just on this particular topic. Um, so, so that's it. So uh, let me just summarize here. We, we had the agenda was what, who, when, where, when, what, who, where, when, how, and why, and the what is API products. The who is the API product manager. The where is the API portal. The when and how are the API management software and the API lifecycle and the why, as it always is, is money. Um, so with that, uh, we'll have any questions and I'll just show you quickly as we uh, get back to Medi. Uh, the back of this deck, again, as I mentioned, has three pages of links um, that we will make available to you. Uh, the top one on the left here is the, the most current blogs that I write for this year. And then if you change it to 2020 or 2019, you can go back in time and find uh, the blogs from previous years. Um, so uh, the blogs that I've written about today's topic are all on this second page here about monetization and about strategy and best practices. And then the third page is some architecture and technology and some industry related uh, content. So that's it. I will stop sharing and see if we have any questions. Yeah, we, we have some questions. Uh, one question is, is, there, is, is this one, uh, is there a perfect API business model? <laughs> the perfect API business model is the one that makes uh, you, you the most revenue, I guess, right? So, uh, so uh, I like, personally, I'm not a big fan of, of the, the direct monetization. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, there are models where that makes a lot of sense, but in my view, the majority of the money you make can come by getting to market faster, by selling to more customers, you'll make a tremendous, in most cases, you will make a tremendous amount more money from using APIs to expand your reach through ecosystems to, to get to market faster with your offerings, to innovate, than you will by getting a small amount of revenue for each individual API call. Um, now, there are some companies like Twilio that made a big business out of, you know, charging for API calls, right? So, so that's not always the right answer, but, uh, but you know, for, for banks, for, you know, um, Companies that that are you know the target of this particular conference, I would say you're more likely to to, to get the speed, reach, innovation, sharing type value. So we have another question like that: Is it better to have a business model from API or APIs from a business model? Always APIs from a business model, right? So 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 you know this is one of the other problems that I see happening a lot is you get the the, the idea that the people hear API monetization. Oh, we need to charge for APIs. Oh, we need to charge by the number of times you call the API. Well, how many times does your business do a business model that's based on how many times a customer interacts with you? It, it, it typically is not that model. The, the model that businesses tend to work on is how much value are you providing to this customer, right? So in the banking scenario, if I'm a bank and I make loans, uh, a loan could be for you know, $1 or a loan could be for a million dollars. And and each one of those could be one API call. Do I want to make the same amount of money from the $1 loan as the million dollar loan? Probably not, right? So so it, it's much more about the business model is the value and not the number of API calls. Right? And, and so think about the business model you want to put in place first, then build the APIs for that, and then build the, the, the pricing structure around that if there is one. So, so with regulation imposing APIs to be open, uh, it becomes a commodity. How can you differentiate yourself in this whole industry commoditized uh, by regulation? 
Yeah, I, I mean, you know, that's an interesting discussion and we do that one a lot too. Uh, you know, there's a certain set of things you must do to play in, and, and to be allowed to be a bank or to be, you know, whatever. Um, if different industries are starting to get involved in the regulations. Um, but beyond the regulations, you're seeing open banking, open banking, as an example, happening in countries that don't have the regulations. And, and, and why is that? And the answer is because there's more value in beyond just the, the, the commodity APIs that you're going to do to meet that regulatory requirement. It's the new offerings that you build on top of that and the more value that you can provide to your customer beyond just the, the you know, payment uh, API and, and, the, and the few things that are commodity, let's say, uh, across the different things. So, so I definitely have seen companies that, that say, okay, we have to meet the regulatory requirement. That's what we're going to do. And then stop. And, and they're not as successful as the ones that say, okay, we have a new world here. And, and let, what can we do to, to take advantage of this world beyond just meeting the regulatory requirement and go beyond that? And that's really where you want to be. Yeah, thank you. And we are just uh, at the right time for the break.